Okay, I wanted to take a minute to go more over the um, control logics addressing. And I realized that I've had you guys kind of switch gears and move on to the micro 800 lab for the next couple of weeks, and we probably won't get to touch control logics again, maybe for several weeks. Um, but I wanted to take a few minutes to show this to you because it's important. So what's um, what we've been doing and what you're used to doing with the Siemens has been um, kind of addressed uh, or, you know, kind of um, ad addressing based on memory location. So we did like a percent I 0 0.1 and that kind of referred to the percent I table being the input table 0 0.1. So zero would have been um, byte zero and one would have been bit one. So we could have mapped that IO point to the memory table based on that um, address. So percent I of 0 0.1, percent I 3.2 would have been byte three bit two, right? So we knew how to kind of find it in the in the index um, or the, the memory stack. Control logics does it differently. Um, first off is they don't use any kind of um, memory based addressing like the Siemens does. So they use kind of, they use tags. And for the inputs and outputs on the um, cards themselves, they get mapped to these local tags. So local one, local two, local three, that would refer to the local chassis, slots one, local slot two, local slot three. So if I had a physical rack in front of me, I have a CPU typically is in slot zero, and then I've got my input card in slot one, um, right there. I've got my output card in slot two, all right, and I got my analog input card in slot three. So that's how I kind of go about configuring this chassis. I put the cards in their slots, and then now we can come and look at the addressing for those slots here in, in the uh, controller tags. So um, the input card in slot one, we get mapped to local one colon I right here. All right. And when you kind of expand it out, you'll see we have uh, fault data and data. Uh, of course, fault would mean if there's any kind of particular fault with those cards, uh, we get that there. Uh, data would refer to the data. So dot zero, dot one, dot two would refer to bits zero, one, two, or inputs zero, one, two on the card. So if I had a switch wired to the first input, then that would be data.0, and my 0 or my 1 would show up right here. If it was turned on, it would be a 1. If it's turned off, it's a 0. All right. So how would we actually reference this in, the, um, in a ladder logic diagram? So if we came to main routine, and if we were to drop... A, uh, a couple of contacts in here. So I got a normally uh, open contact. Let's put a normally closed contact. Let's go ahead and put an output there. So if I double click in the question mark above it, I can of course type a tag name out, but I can also search for it. So now I can search and we're going to go to local one I and we're gonna to go to local one I data and we're gonna choose zero. All right, so that gives us the structure of local colon one colon i dot data dot zero. And that points back to this right here in the controller tag, which this points back directly to the input on the input card in the chassis. Okay, so that's how we're going to get from wire to the card, from the card to the memory, and then from the memory to the program itself. Uh, we could go ahead and put a second one here, such as uh, percent I, or percent, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> local one I, let's say maybe data, okay, data one. 
And then if we want to tie this coil to an actual output, we're going to use the output card. The output card, again, is in slot two, as we see right there. So we're going to uh, double click. We will go to our, our table here, and we're going to go local to. Now, since this is an output, we're going to choose the O. So since this output card can have some diagnostic data to it, they tend to use the I for the diagnostics and O for the actual outputs themselves. So we're going to go uh, local to O and then data and we'll tie it to the first output. And there we go. We've got a simple ladder logic where my first input on my input card, if that turns on, and then if my second input on the input card, if it is not on, since it's normally closed, then I will turn on my output to the output card. All right. Now, you say this is ridiculous uh, to try to know all these things. And if you're trying to troubleshoot this, this may or may not be totally intuitive to someone. So what you can do is you can create what's called alias tags. So if we come here to um, edit tags, and let's call this start. And we're going to make sure this is a Boolean. Right? Since it's a, uh, going to be a discrete point. And we want start to be an alias for local one I data zero. All right. And maybe we'll create another one called stop. Again, we want to make sure this is a Boolean. And we'll make this one an alias for local one I data one. All right. So I had to go to edit tags down here and I want to go back to monitor tags. So these two guys are now being created. If I were to come back to the main routine, um, they don't quite show here yet. But if I were to uh, say start now, you'll see that it's mapped to local one I data zero. And if I say stop, the type in the tag name stop, it is now mapped, you can see to local I, um, local one I data dot one, all right? So um, we don't have to necessarily deal with these tags always, but we can create alias tags and uh, point them back to those. We can create alias tags for anything. So I can even create another alias tag that points to this alias tag, which is in turn pointing to the back to the percent I or um, local one I dot zero. Okay, so alias tags are just simply um, pointers to other memory spaces inside the controller. So again, in the, in the control logics world, we don't have to know all the internal workings of the memory mapping that controller tag database kind of does that for us. We're gonna just create tags and reference tags and then the controller itself knows where the pointers are to go get the data from that tag. All right, um, hopefully this kind of cleared up a little bit better. Uh, I know it's hard still, it would be so much more obvious and intuitive and we can actually connect to a, a real controller and let you kind of just play around with this. I think it would become very, um, you know, again, intuitive at that moment to see how it works. Um, but, but the, so there's, so that some people will define, there's two types of PLCs out there. There's kind of addressing based PLCs and then tag based PLCs. Um, I've never really heard people refer to that, um, quite honestly in that manner before, but I've, I've read some, some places where people do that. So, uh, control objects, of course, would be an example of a tag based PLC, everything's tag based. The Siemens S7 1200 would be an example of a address based PLC. Because again, we, we don't necessarily have tags. We create tags, of course, but we, we have addresses kind of underneath all that stuff. There's always, we have to point the tag or reference a tag to a memory space in those, in those address based PLCs. Okay, um, reach out if there's any questions on that. If it's still not clear, Please uh, take a minute to, to kind of reach out and, and we can uh, try to explain this better.